I think that falls back to the original question, like when you know it's time to outgrow someone. I think one, if uh, the only thing that's holding our friendship together is the past. If yeah. the only thing that brings us together is who I was in the past, I'm not even that girl no more, mm -hmm. it's time for me to let you go. On this episode of Consider That, we will be exploring the hit HBO series Insecure and discussing the dynamics of the friendship between the characters Issa and Molly. What are fair expectations to have of a friend? How do you maintain friendships through different seasons of life? When do you know that it's time to move on from a friendship? We will examine these questions and much more as we consider Insecure. All right, y'all, so let's jump into season four of Insecure. I'm gonna give you guys some background. So, Issa and Molly are longtime friends whose relationship slowly sours over time. While they're close, there's several situations that leave Molly feeling as if Issa's kind of selfish and inconsiderate. And then she begins to view their relationship as more of a burden than like something that's valuable. But on the flip side, Issa feels unsupported by Molly in some of her most vulnerable moments. And then ultimately, constant conflict and differences kind of lead to the end of their friendship. So here's question number one. Let's start with this one. If you consider both of their needs, do you think Issa and Molly were bad friends to one another? I don't think they were bad friends towards one another. I think they just didn't understand how to grow with each other. I feel like if you are friends with someone for such a long time, you have to understand that your friendship at 21 is not your friendship at 28. And you have to understand what is needed to nurture and to grow that friendship as you are going into this different phase of your life. I think that's the part that, where, that's where they both missed the mark, honestly. Uh -huh. That's not bad friends? No, I don't think that makes you a bad, I don't think that makes it a bad friendship. I think you're just not sitting down. I think if, you're, if you've been friends with someone for so long, you're stuck in a certain habit, you know? Mm -hmm. like You're comfortable. It, you're comfortable, you're complacent. You just think your friendship is this one thing and you haven't even realized that, wow, this thing that we bonded over at 21 is not, we're not, we don't even care about that thing anymore. So what is still connecting us as friends? Because I still love you, you're still one of my closest friends, but now we have to find different things that interest the both of us. What what can we relate on? Let's pick a show that we can still constantly talk, you know. It's like you have to, when you love someone, it's in any relationship, you have to find some type of common ground. And I feel like sometimes when you have been friends with someone for so long, you lose sight of, damn, like we're not into this anymore. We need to find something that's gonna keep us together. I think Molly was a bad friend. Oh. <laughs> in my opinion, when it came to Issa. I think Molly was so used to seeing Issa struggling, and Molly was always like, I got you, Issa. And in that section of that, you know, Issa kind of used Molly to that advantage. But when Issa started to level up and started to, you know, blossom, Molly was like, I feel like she was like, oh, I don't like, I don't, I don't like that. Like, she kind of become jaded towards her. She wasn't really supportive towards her. And you clearly see Issa was really trying to get on her shoes and Molly was just not supporting her. I agree with you on like, you have to go with your friends, but I think in this specific scenario with Molly and Issa, I just think Molly was low key jealous because Issa was loving it up. Cause Molly always had it. Molly was always successful. She had the job, she had the money, she had everything. And she was just like, wait, she wasn't saying it to her face, but her actions were showing that. What was the moment that made you realize that? I'm curious, because I'm trying to recall the Oh, when she now. asked her, I need help with my artist, and the artist flopped on her. I forgot, I really forgot what happened, but the artist flopped on her, she couldn't make it, and she needed help. She created this whole entire block party, mm -hmm. and she asked Molly, her boyfriend was in the scene, she asked for that one favor, and she was like, I don't want to put my relationship between my friendship you see your friend is doing this whole entire event and her artist dropped on her. If I was Issa, I would do the same thing too. I'd be like, Andrew, um, I need help getting an artist. Can you help me? And even he was like, yeah, I helped Issa. Why wouldn't I not help her? She needs help. I remember I, they weren't friends at that point. I was about to say that. I was that about too, to come but on that. sorry. I think it's business, honey. In that aspect, they both missed the mark because there was clear tension in their friendship. So it was selfish of Issa to, Issa to ask a favor when you're not even dealing head on on why we have tension. So if I know, we both know there's something going on in our friendship, but I'm going to ignore that to ask you for a favor. That's where Issa messed up. But I think back to what you said about you know, the growth thing. I think throughout the season, their relationship was very comfortable. They never had conflict until they both started progressing in the one weakness that they had in their in their lives. 
Yeah, Molly had it all with career wise, but she she was mess. Her love life yeah. was messy. Whereas Issa kind of thrived in that because she had Lawrence, and even though she didn't, have, she always has a man. Yeah. Molly didn't really have that. Yeah, Issa had a man, but she struggled career wise. Whereas Molly thrived in that. So when they both started progressing in that, they both didn't know how to support the other one in that because they never saw each other in that light. Because that's something that they had their friendship. They gave each other like you know what? This is my girl. I can help her with her career. This is my girl. I can help her with a relationship. But now that we're both progressing, that I don't need you anymore. Now they get to the point where what is the new foundation of our friendship? Yeah. And they both could have had a simple conversation, but they both. Panic. They were popped in panic. They freaked out. They didn't have a conversation with so much resentment. That's why by the time the festival happened, it was so, the block party happened, it was so much stuff that they didn't talk about. That's why when it's time to argue, y'all just throwing out anything to hurt the person because these are things y'all were just holding on to to the point where y'all yep. were arguing. But I think you Issa tried to reach person. out to her though. Issa tried because she felt the tension. She yeah. tried to have conversations with Molly and Molly was like, no, no, I don't want to talk to you. Like, Issa legit tried, and you can see that she did try. And Molly was low key over it because she was taught, she was so used to seeing Issa being beneath her, it was hard for her to. And some friends are like that. Some friends like you where you at. Yep. And I feel like you gotta give grace though. Like no, I think, I think, that. I think with Molly's, with, with with the situation with Molly, she was trying to figure out also how to not only juggle a friendship and a new relationship, but also how to juggle a f old friendship with new dynamics mm -hmm. and a new relationship as well. But her so, friend was trying to level up, and she was right. But at the me. same time, one she... of those level ups was a favor you needed from my boyfriend. And if I'm not mistaken, her boy, her and her boyfriend weren't also on the best terms yeah. for her to ask her boyfriend for a favor for mm -hmm. her friend as well. I feel so. Like... You gotta also understand now in East. Uh, in Issa's perspective, it worked out for her, luckily, but if it didn't work out, now that would have been another strain that she caused on Molly Andrews' relationship. So that's what I'm saying. His name is Andrew, right? I think, oh, I remember. All right, I was, okay. Cool. Love it, Andy. I remember, right, so I remember. So, so that's what I'm saying, like, I think we gotta give Molly just a little bit of grace because she also had to figure out, yes, the dynamic in their friendship was changing, so you also need to you need uh, room for growth to, so for them to birth, both learn the new dynamic in that new friendship. Mm -hmm. So that's where I come from. I with also that. feel like because that dynamic was so off, and because they weren't growing together as they prog as they progressed in life, their friendship became very conditional. Yeah. So I feel like that's where a lot of the tension grew out of too. Like it was like. It became a very, all right, you're my friend when I can benefit off of you for both of them, not just on one. It was, that was, you know, on both sides for yeah. sure. I think that like that was very apparent, especially like season four. It was like, oh, this is very, it's a very conditional friendship. Even though y'all have this long lasting friendship, the foundation is broken and now it's just based on conditions. I also think they were scared too. I think they <clears throat> both were realizing we're growing and it's like, this is my girl, I'm going nowhere. And you're kind of worried like, dang, I'm about to, I'm leveling it up. I want my friend to be there when I level up and I'm starting to see like, we got we have cracks in our friendship, so I'm scared. So I think they both were scared and they didn't know the right way to handle it. So they were both freaking out and just working off of emotions, but also being wrapped up in their level up, trying to fix that. And I think with friendships too, to be honest and be quite frank, if you can't be used, you're useless. So I think in a friendship, you should be able to use each other. It just shouldn't be like, well, if you can't do this for me, then I can't do this for you. It should still be someone saying, I can't do this for you right now. That's cool. That's no problem. The next time around, if we can work out for each other, that's cool. But that our friendship shouldn't be solely based on what we can provide for each other. But within this friendship, we should still be useful to each other. Otherwise, why are we associating with each other? Well, and I think it kind of brings it back for me to the original question. Were they good friends? I would say no, right? But I view friendship in a different way. And I think we all view friendship in different ways, right? We can describe love in 50 different ways. We could describe friends in different ways. And I feel like if there is a friendship with conditions, then you're not my friend, right? My friendship is the type where we can go at it with one another. We may hate each other for that moment. We're going to go our separate ways and come back and be able to talk about it. And I feel as though that entire season, they continued to avoid confrontation until it blew up at the end. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, like, is that a friendship? And you mentioned, you know, if you're not useful, you're useless. And obviously that has some nuance to it. But I don't necessarily, at the very least, just to be an ear, I guess that could be useful. But like... I don't know. I, I just I have very few people I would say are friends just because I think you have to go through something. Yeah. And I do. And I just honestly believe as though Issa and Molly's friendship showed so much strain. I'm not even sure it was a friendship to begin with. I think they served each other for what, what they needed for how they grew up, because I think they did. They grew up together in L.A. I think that was the premise. Right. Mm -hmm. Then they went to college together. So I feel like that's what made them comfortable, because it was that, I'll go back to this girl, this is my home girl. So I think they served a purpose for who they are, who they were as that age. But as they got older, I feel like 
that's when the strain came because they're growing. So that kind of broke the equilibrium in their, their friendship because now we're, we're getting older. We're both becoming balanced. Our friendship was I'm a, it's conditional for me. I don't think conditional what we're using each other. I think it was conditional based on who I was at that person, what you did for me. So now we're loving it up. They never really thought of each other in a state of, well, who is, who, what is my friendship with Molly when she's healed? What is my friendship with Issa when she's in the career that she needs to be in? They never thought of that they could, because they probably each other just thought, you're never going to find a man and you're never going to get a career. So we're good there. So as stuff started arising for both of them, they didn't know how to uplift each other and support each other in that. It was always some type of shade because it's like, okay, this is not going to last long because, again, they both were freaking out. They didn't know what their friendship would look like with everything figured out. So new question for you guys. When, when is the moment when it's time to give up a friendship and when is the moment when it's time to pour back into it and continue giving it a second, third, et cetera, et cetera chance? I think that depends on who you are. Like for me, like I'm a very forgiving person and I'm a person, especially if I love you, like I don't want you out of my life. So I'm going to try and try. I'm going to try to do whatever I can to hold on to this friendship. Mm -hmm. But when I'm all out of options and nothing is working and we're constantly going at it or you're constantly pissing me off or like there is this very weird passive aggressive behavior, then it's time to let it go. But it's like, I'm gonna fight for my friendship until I cannot anymore. But I, love, I, I love examples. Do you have any examples? Yeah, I mean, if we're talking about kind of, you know, leveling, leveling up and progressing, I think we've all, you know, been in that spot where, you know, we hit a point where we were leveling up a little bit quicker than maybe some of our best friends. And we realized that the certain spaces that we were now in, they couldn't be in those spaces either. And, you know, obviously that now brings tension and you not you guys aren't seeing each other as often. You guys aren't, you guys don't like the same things. Mm -hmm. Then it comes from, now you have some type of animosity and jealousy and oh, people making like, jokes when it's like nah you're dead serious <laughs> like you're like and you don't want to call your friend a hater but it's the energy they're bringing towards you is like all right well because now it's very clear that we're on different levels now you're trying to throw shade because we're disconnecting and i think that's a perfect i think when you realize you're disconnecting with someone it, the person one person could try to fight for it or another person because they're hurt by it is going to throw shade because that's the only way they know how to deal with it in that moment so i feel like that's an example kind of you know going through that and because that shade is being thrown as that passive aggressive now we're fighting now we're arguing now is i don't mess with this person it turned it but something so small as everybody can't come like everybody can't come but sometimes you still want these people in your life, maybe they can't be in your life at the capacity they were before two yeah. years ago, but that don't mean just because I'm here and you're not here with me, that don't mean you can't be here at all. But if you, if that's how you're perceiving it, that's your own scheme. That's based on your schema. That's you projecting. I'm not doing anything to you. So it's like, you gotta, you have to love people where they are on both sides. Mm -hmm. So if you see your friend is progressing and leveling up, you gotta cheer them on. Like you gotta cheer them on for the sideline. You have to understand that your relationship is gonna be different. The right. spaces y'all hang out in are gonna be different, but throwing shade or throwing hate is only gonna separate y'all more. Is it mature, just to piggyback off of her thing really quickly, is it mature for the person to take a step back if they realize they can't be that support, supporter friend to the person? That's okay. Yes, yes that's, okay. that's good. Okay. I've had to demote people's title in my life. Like, you can't be my best friend, but you can just be my regular friend. You can't be my friend, you can be my acquaintance because what I want for you from a best friend, you can't give me right now, and that's okay. That don't mean we can't be friends, but in my mind, if I don't think of you as that best friend or that bestie or that sister, I won't have these expectations of you. I'm okay with that. Oh, no, I mean, if you can't give them the support. Oh, yeah, I, I do it. Oh, yeah, oh, I do it. Okay, oh, yeah, okay, definitely. Okay. I've told people all the time, like, listen, I can't show for you the way you want me to right now. And most of the time, if I can't show up, it's because I'm going through my own thing and I need to focus on myself right now because people are used to me being the one that's help, holding everyone together. And there are times I'm like, listen, I got my own stuff I got to deal with. I have to step back, but I'm supporting you from afar. And then I'll come back probably a month or two later, like, all right, y'all, ready? To, what happened? What's been going on? Like, you need me? Yeah. Like, I think that's growth. I think that's being an adult. Yeah. I think that's communication. I think, mm -hmm. back to your question, I think the only way I want to end a friendship is if you show disrespect, if you're disrespectful to me. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're just rude to me, hand down, trying to fight me, put your hands on me, curse at me, right. I'm not being your friend no more. But I also think, like, I had to learn. I'm, I give 110% to my friendships and I had to understand people can give that back to me and I had to you know okay you're an acquaintance 
You're a friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. You're yeah, my yeah. childhood friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're my sister. You're my whatever. And if you show that 110% to me, then I'm going to give that back to you. Yeah. But when it comes to disrespect and putting hands on and doing all that kind of stuff, like, I ain't. I ain't dealing with you. And if you're not emotionally intelligent too, to communicate, like you said about, mm-hmm. I can't be there for you at this point, mm-hmm. tell me that. Mm-hmm. I'll give you full respect. I'm like, kudos to you for telling me that you can't be there for me as without with, with you not, you know, disappearing and not being there and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, disrespect. No, we're not doing that. As the, the friendship can go on when there's understanding. You, we're, we're gonna go through things. And my example of that would be, my two best friends started dating each other. So we were the three, it was a guy and a girl. They started dating each other. Now I'm the third one. So I'm like, all right, cool, this is fun. Like, I told them, y'all not gonna holla at her. Like, yeah, go ahead, do your thing. Then they did it, we a year in, and I feel like y'all always got the same, you feel me, thought. And then when I think, y'all think A, I think B, I feel like I'm getting ganged up on. I don't wanna do this no more. You feel me? Like, I think y'all should know. I don't wanna do this. So, but I had to have the understanding, like, it's Friday night, you know, we used to chill out, but y'all on a day and I'm chilling in the crib. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> you know what I mean? It but was at a the third same time, right. So, but at the same time, it's like I had to have the understanding. My two best friends, they love each other. They're in a relationship, so I have to understand that's not my place to get in there. When it's time for the three of us to be friends, then that's when it happens. Now, the relationship didn't work out. Now I'm like, I got my dog back. But, you know, but at the same time, again, it's that understanding. When he came back, it was like, yo, you know, I, I, I didn't, no, nah, go hang out with, I didn't do that. I had that understanding like, oh, why? Right, you free on Friday? Let's get it. You know what I mean? So it, I think as long as you have the understanding within the different levels of that relationship, you know, I think it'll work out. I think that falls back to the original question, like when you know it's time to outgrow someone. I think one, if uh, the only thing that's holding our friendship together is the past. If the only thing that brings us together is who I was in the past, I'm not even that girl no more, mm-hmm. it's time for me to let you go. For me to stop a friendship, like you said, you have to have disrespected yeah. me to another level yeah. where I don't want to speak to you. But to outgrow it, I think, because I feel like for me, I can bring people on my journey, but it's like, why are you here? You have to serve some type of purpose right. in my growth. Like, I need everyone to play a part in my growth. And I'm very vocal about that with my friends. Like, listen, this is what I w- expect of you. You got to get your life together. Bef- so if you do, for you to hang with me, I need this from you. Which is why people like being friends with me, because I pull the best out of them. Because yes. they know, I want you to come with me, but you can't come with me half-stepping. I need you to go uh, full throttle. And if, <laughs> and, if, and, if, and if you can't, like, all right. And that's cool. Then God you can't be in those <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, for me, I feel like I'm a person who, if I'm at the top, I need everybody who uh, is around me to be at the top, too. So if I'm having a conversation with someone and they're talking about, oh, yeah, I'm looking for someone that could do that, and I know some, I'm gonna, I'm going to say your name in those rooms. Thanks. Now, if you drop the ball after I said, said your name in that room and gave you that opportunity that's on you and it's not going to put a it's not going to put a damper on our friendship but it's definitely going to I can't bring you anywhere else with me Mm -hmm. I'm going to learn my lesson because I I want you to excel the same way I'm excelling but if you're not ready for that yourself you what's the saying you could bring to the the horse of the war but you can't make them drink it and Mm -hmm. I think I've learned that for sure and that's one of the problems when you are when you want everyone that you came up with to be around you like you're gonna try to give them those opportunities you're gonna make sure they have those seats at the table too but don't make me look bad (laughs) exactly 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 don't make me look bad and it's like I did I'm doing all I can so it's like your friend who might be you know not where you are they have to pick up and hold their end of the bargain too right all right, Elijah, I want to come back to what you said because that was, it blew my mind, right? You had two best friends, opposite sex, they started dating each other. And so obviously the dynamic of your relationship changed. So I wonder when your friends came back, did they expect you to be the same person you were beforehand and did, did things change? Um, I can't really say what their expectations were. I can just say that I was still the same me because as a, a human, and I can only speak from the perspective as a man, but as a man, you know, things, you, things change. You know, as, as when you, when you have a girlfriend, when you have a woman, whether it's a girlfriend, a wife, or a girl you like, you have to reprioritize whether, even if you're talking about money, listen, am I going to hang out with my boys? Am I going to get this money? Cause I got bills to pay. I have a new level that I want to reach. So it's really just about learning that part and just realizing, okay, you know what? There's, there, there are levels to certain things, and I'm just not that high up in level. I don't feel a certain type of way about that. So, nah, when he was ready to come back and, you know, we could hang out or whatever the case was, I'm cool with it because while he was in his relationship, I was in a relationship as well. So I also started to realize, oh, this is what I understand that feeling. So, you know, you it's, it's, again, it's just about understanding and just learning, like, 
I'm, you're not always going to be that number one person in everybody's life that you want to be because everybody has their own set of priorities. Everybody has their own set of things that they have to take care of. So, you know, you, you can't gauge yourself on their mindset. You have to just do what you do. I think it depends on the situation and why they... It depends. It's also if men we, versus women. I yeah. think, yeah. I think, I think, I think men... Different react in a different way yeah, and we may not you. even talk things out right we don't right? have like he the said, of course look. i ain't even say no we back with it yeah. and but i want i want i'm curious to that you know because elijah and i may react the same way i don't even need to say something my boy is my boy he did some dirt yo you, you foul for that but we back at it but women i think you all take it to a different level or a different way i just think it depends like if we're friends and you don't talk to me when you have your, your boyfriend What's going on? Right, like, right. You know, emotional intelligence. <laughs> right. Like, people just don't really have that. It's like, compart. What's the word? Compartmentalize. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> I have a stuttering problem. Compartmentalize, whatever. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm good at that. Like, I put my boyfriend in this box. I put my girlfriends in this box, mm -hmm. family in this box. Like, and people just don't have it. If I feel like you don't have that, low key, I'm like, then. What's the point of our friendship? Yeah. Like, we're friends. Like, you have a boyfriend, but we're also still friends. Like, you can put your schedule in, in that box. And I feel mm -hmm. like for me, if I put you in my schedule and I prioritize you, prioritize me too, yeah. hands down. I feel like some women act like they can't be in a relationship and have their friends. Like, that's the true testament of our friendship. Communicate with me. And I know my friends. I know some of my friends, being in a relationship is a priority to them, is not to me. Yeah. But I know they're so gone. They start dating. I'm like, oh, this girl, she met a new guy. Okay, I already know what's about to happen. But listen, sis, I'm here. You can have that extra time, but communicate that with me. Don't start flopping on me and flaking because our friendship is so much better than that. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm the most understanding person. I may be rough around the edges, but I'm, I have empathy, I have compassion, and I'm so understanding, and I'm patient. I just want you to tell me and keep it a buck with me. Like, listen, I'm dating this guy, so, like, don't, don't, don't make plans with me knowing you're going to flop. And also, every time we hang out, don't bring this man around. <laughs> like, I understand y'all attached to the hip, but girl, this is our time. Yeah. Like, like, he can drive us to the place, time. but he don't got But he got to go. <laughs> like, some women act like they have to bring their man for everything. And it's me, I respect it, but there are times where things I'm going to talk to you about, and I don't need Joe hanging around. <laughs> I'm also wondering, why does Joe want to hang around? I was going to say, as a man, you should also know, like, nah, go hang out with your girl. I'm going I'm to either sit in the house, yeah, I'm going to wait for you to come, I'm wait for you to call yeah. me, so I don't, you're going to come back. But I don't also have to tag. I don't need to be there. Go be with your friends. I'm going to go be with my friends. And we we can have, you can also have individual relationships while in a relationship with each other. Like, you can still be an individual. And so, it's smart and yeah. healthy. Exactly. I feel like, I feel like exactly. you got to learn to adjust to those kind of friends, too. Like, oh, okay, you want to always be up under your man? Okay, then I'm not going to invite you out no more. Oh, yeah. I'm not inviting you to nothing. I don't want to hang out with you. I don't want to see you because clearly you don't want to see me. So when you want to start seeing me again, cool, let's do it. But I'm not going to continuously, oh, let's do this, let's do this. For you to be like, mm, I don't know. Well, he doesn't. Okay, well, now I know. I'm going to go with my other friends. We're going to have a exactly. ball. And you're going to see it on my Instagram story. And you're going to have FOMO. Like, it's literally just that. Just because... We're just not friends. Exactly. We're just not no, friends. Like, and, I, and I will say, like, thankfully, I haven't had too many friendships where that was an issue. Like, once they get a man, I don't see them anymore. It's very rare that that does happen. Because I feel like with the way me and my our friend dynamic is like, Everyone is welcome. Like, yeah, bring them around. Yeah, this is family. Yeah, yeah, all of that. But so it's it's like we never even get to that point where I'm not seeing you because now you're in a relationship, you know? Like, And like I said, thankfully, but when I do have those kind of friendships, I just have to learn to adjust to and understand, like, all right, I can't speak on this relationship is probably the best thing that ever happened to them. And I can't judge them for that. I can't speak on that. Support. But I, exactly. But I have to just adjust their our relationship in my mind now and if that means that i have to be okay with not seeing you i don't want you now coming to me talking about you acting funny how i invited you i invited you out 10 times in a row and you came once like because you chose to do something that was more important and that's fine but like you can't be mad at me when i realize that this is what you want to do and i'm gonna let you do it you know can i ask a question because so if you have a friend who this is the friend we go out this is we go to the calls, we get drinks, this, that, and the third. So if you and I have, if your friend is in a relationship now and she's maybe in a stage where she doesn't just go to the club, she wants to still be friends with you, but the things you guys did in that friendship, she no longer does. She grew out of it. 
but she still wants that friendship. Do you give her space to maybe see what you can do different so this way we can find something different in our friendship? Oh, or is it just communi- like, we exactly. went to the club, That's you don't communi- come out anymore, so now I you feel just like, go. especially if you're, like, I'm an all-around friend. Like, I'm a, we could go, we could go to the bar, we could go to the club, we could go to, you, like, do yoga, we can go hiking, we could sit in a house. Like, I'm an all-around friend, so it's like, whatever, whatever is going to work for you in the space you're in now, you like it, I love it. Like, it's really like that for me. Two words, compromise and pivot. If this is my friend, this is my girl and I love her and I'm happy for her relationship, she cannot do the single things I can do. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. do things that doesn't pair her relationship, to jeopardize her relationship, yep. especially if she's telling me I'm seeing that this is someone she loves. Mm-hmm. I can pivot and compromise. I really gotta go to the club and twerk. We can go to the movies. We can go do something where I don't have to, it's so much stuff to do. We don't have to always. Right. And if this is a friend where all y'all do is go to the club, then that's, you need to reevaluate yeah. that friendship if that's all y'all yep. can do. Because that means y'all friendship is one dimensional and that's not good. I mean, that's good, but that's not your friend. That's an acquaintance. Right. I had a friend, I'm sorry, I had a friend and we're still friends to this day, like my childhood sister. Um, she switched religions um, when we were like in college and we kind of like fell off, but like she was always like, like, like that best friend to me. Um, and then we didn't really talk that much and then I just was in her wedding. So like, mm-hmm. but I'm the kind of friend where I'm like, you're my best friend since like 10 years old. I'm gonna be at your wedding. We're not that cool. I know we can't do the things you want to do. I know we don't, not really believe, but like we don't vibe like that. I must still be your friend. But I did tell her like, yo, can't the ball on me. You didn't communicate to me. You didn't tell me how you feel, but I'm always going to be your friend no matter what. I'm going to grow with you. Mm-hmm. It's all about growing with that person. Yes. Is she going to come with me? No. Is she going to go do this with me? No. But like we can still try to build that relationship. But I'm going to let you know I was low-key hurt that you stopped talking to me because of yada, 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 yada. I like, I like that point about bringing back childhood friends because yeah. I'm sure we all have had friends from when we grow up. Maybe you went to school, you moved to a new city, and then that friendship changes. And I'm curious what you all have experienced. Because similar, I have you know childhood friends where we're still in contact and you know I go to certain events, but it's just not the same. He has his whole new friend group. Yeah. I'm in a fraternity. I got my whole new friend group. We're in two separate careers. And so it's even harder. You have to work 10 times as hard to yes. keep that connection. But what happens when the love is not lost, but it's just like, it's just, it's, it's almost it's inconvenient it's yeah. to be hitting them up so much. Like what, what how, how have you all navigated that? Don't what? hit them up so much. Yeah, I just stop. Yeah, yeah. no, I, yeah. I think one of my OGs told me, you have you have different friends for different things, right? Yeah, uh-huh. My OG told me straight up, listen, I have friends that I've known for five years, 10 years, 15 years, and they don't know where I live. They've never set foot in my house, cause for what? <laughs> Would you be Our in their way? You can be in the wedding as long as we ain't getting married in my house. You see what I'm saying? Like, you get what I'm saying? So like our different friendships could have different levels. When you reach a different point in your life and I reach a different point in my life, our friendship is at a different point now. It doesn't mean that the friendship has to end. We're just at a different place in the friendship. So as long as we can continue, maybe we speak every day in the week. And then that's those seven days turn into three days. We just adjust. Those three days turn into one day. There's still communication. There's still some room for some. Hey, listen, we it's been a, a couple months. You trying to meet up for some drink? Cool, we could do that. And then that's stop. We drink for three hours and then we'll see each other in the next couple months. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that if that works out for both people. Some friendships don't even need that. Like I, with a lot of my guy friendships, I feel like we can not see each other for months and then we see each other again and we're still good. Right. Yeah. Even still girlfriends good. too. Even girlfriends. Those are low More maintenance guy friends. friendships. <laughs> yeah. I love those. I have a child, I have two child friends. One who was with me as I'm progressing in life and now that friendship has ended. But I have one who as well, but she lives in another state. When she comes to New York, we hang out. It's like we never missed a beat. We communicate. We, happy birthdays. You know, she has kids. I'll send her kids gifts. You know, we'll check in. Like, yo, I thought about you today. You good? Like, I don't have to hit up every day. But the love is still there because we both know life just life. Yeah. We on social media. I see you every day on social media. I know you good. Yeah. I'm good with that. I should put in more effort to speak to her more, but I don't have to because she doesn't make me feel like, you don't speak to me every day like your other friends. We That's get it. That We're loyalty adults. is still there. That we loyalty and that love is still there. And yeah. once you already had that with somebody, that's why I was like, I'm in your wedding. Of course. Like, I need to like, I have to speak to you in five like, years. We don't have to talk all the time because I know things are different, but like, it's that love. And like, if you have that and you have the understanding, then that's fine. And sometimes you can't, can't take things personal, yeah. especially mm-hmm. in friendships. I, I have my own life. You have your own life. You have your own life. I can't unless you directly are rude towards me. Mm-hmm. But if you have your own things, like, it's cool. Like, you can't just take, Go I feel like nowadays, <laughs> everyone just take things personal all the time. It's just like, bro, like, it is what it is. God is love and love is God. Like, you don't tell me, you like, tell me good morning, you feel yeah, like what it, like, 
So when you mentioned that story, it made me immediately think about something. I felt like as I was getting older, I had to realize. I kind of started compartmentalizing my (laughs) relationships. Started on that one a little bit. And I'm curious to know if anyone else does the same. Because for me, there's like people who I speak to about business. There's friends that I might go out to for social gatherings. But then there's other friends who I might talk to about closer things. And sometimes they mix, sometimes they don't. Is that something y'all do? And do you think that's kind of the way now that we're older? Yeah, I have friends who I know I can bring to my job holiday parties because I know they won't embarrass me. I can't bring my... No, no, it's no shade. I love all my friends, but I know there's certain groups of friends who are going to always be themselves. So, you know, I'm having a holiday party at my job and, you know, this is big. You can't be twerking here. But as opposed to just telling them they can't be themselves, I just won't bring you along. Yeah. You know, I have friends who I go to the clubs with and it's like, all right, we're going to this man section. Who are my baddies that's going to make sure <laughs> you got to come with me? Like, And then I have my friends who... I can talk movies and shows all day because I know they watch as much TV as I do. So it's and that's okay because then it helps with our expectations. I don't have to make have make force you to be an overall friend because I'm going to allow you to be yourself and I could come as I am and I don't expect you to do anything but be yourself. I don't have to put no pressure on you to try to do something. I know you probably can't do. Yeah, I love that you kept it real about your baddies that you bring to the no, that, no, that's a thing. If you ain't trying Very to have important. nobody buy you some drinks, we got to keep it up. Cool. I feel like I honestly do struggle with compartmentalizing my friends because I set the same expectation that they can set for me. So I know, like I said before, I know that I'm an all-around friend, so I expect a lot of my friends to also be all-around friends. And I, I think it really is important when you also, you know, just to bring mental health into the picture, right? And that's what, this is the biggest thing for me. If I'm, you have to be able to be my friend when I'm Simone at 100 and when I'm Simone at negative 10. If you can't do that, you can't be in my life. Yeah. So because of that reason, I have to have all around friends. I have to, the same friends that I'm going to the club with and I'm in the sections with, they got to be the same friends that I'm able to call when I'm, or they're the ones pulling up on me, on me when they know that I'm going through something. And the same that I expect from them is the same that I would do for them, you know? So that is something that I'm trying to do better at, like compartmentalizing friends without feeling a way about it. You know, understanding not everyone couldn't be an all around person mm-hmm. and just kind of lowering my expectations of people. Well, the friends that for me that can be the all around, those are not my friends, those are my sisters, those are my bros. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. those yeah. are the ones where I know you can, sisters, if I can yeah. bring you to any setting and Gian is not Gian, Gian's not the, on her S-H-I-T, she's not on it. Gian is depressed in the house and you come in to show up for me, that's my sis, that's yeah. my bro. But a lot of people don't know how to deal with me at my lowest because they used to see me at my high. And I'm not gonna hold that against you. You just not that friend. And that's fine. I'm gonna get it from my girl. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, and that's what I'm trying to do better at understanding that just because someone can't be there for me when I am going through it doesn't mean that they're not, it doesn't lessen their value of our Mm -hmm. friendship. It just means that maybe they're not there yet in their own healing or in their own journey that they understand how to be that kind of friend. And like I said, so like it's something I'm trying to be better at, you know. It'll spare you your peace, too, because I'm, I'm that same way. I have high expectations. Mm-hmm. And what I found is I was the one who was constantly hurting from that. Yeah. I can't yep. change other people. Yep. So I was like, okay, what what's going on here? This is me, a me situation. And I, that was a thing that saved a lot of my friendships. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, accepting them for who they are and placing them in the appropriate categories. Yeah. I agree. I agree, too. And I think, like, too, at the table, see, we're using compartmentalize. But, see, other black people, we call it cold switching and I hate that term because black people are not monolithic so the way I act Mm. at home is not the same way we act at work is not the same way we act when we're hanging out with some friends you know what I mean so like for example I have a black friend who's from California but I talked to him about hunting he tell me how to hunt squirrels how to hunt raccoons (laughs) how to skin them how to make turn them into hats how to sell, like he tells me how to do all this and I'm sitting here like, oh, word, well, what size gun do you, well, how do you do this? Well, how do you, well, what's the point of it? So that's not the same person I'm sitting, I'm talking to my man like, oh, okay, cool. So you heard about the Amazon split earlier this year. So how much did you invest on that stuff? We, those same people, we're not having the same conversations, but we look the same. So I think you definitely have to compartmentalize the, <laughs> um, your friendships for sure. Sorry, I feel like it's different for men too. I feel yes. like men are a lot better at compartmentalizing their friendships friends like like you were just saying you have one friend that you talk about hunting with and then you have another friend that you talk about stocks I feel like a lot of men that I know they have those friendships like those very specific friendships and that is beautiful but I feel like 
women kind of have a harder time doing that a little bit. I don't know. Well, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm getting exhausted listening. To, <laughs> like you, like you talking about how much you expect, and that's so beautiful. But like, I can't take like I got to deal with my parents, my girl, like my life. To take on a friend just feels so heavy. Yeah. And, and I recognize that's the difference between, you know, men and women oftentimes. I think, yeah. you know, of course, men could be emotional. Women could not be emotional, you know. But definitely, it's just like, yo, this is my boy that I play ball with. This is my guy who knows business. This yeah. is my, my boy who knows the news. And so it's just I go to who I need. Yeah. But it feels heavy. Me personally, just hearing and understanding that you all need so much. But I also recognize men and women are different. And I think... Yeah. That is beautiful, but at the same time, I think that also when it comes to relationships, what makes things so difficult, right? Because women are now expecting something that men are like, I didn't even know you needed this. <laughs> I love how carefree men are, though. <laughs> like, you know, like, if I'm not trying to throw shade. Like, you guys are really, really, truly carefree when it comes to friends and relationships. Like, I feel like as black women, we're very high strung for a reason because we have to be. Like, we have to have high expectations for ourselves and for our friends because we deal with so much. Sometimes it's so overwhelming to just deal with ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we need to have that person that we can trust because honestly, some women are just shady and you mm -hmm. can, and you don't know it until you go through something mm -hmm. and you're like, dang, like I thought you were really a friend. And then we have to unpack that and then try to also try to get new friends and then try to also be nice and then try to also not be mean. And then it's Learn a how lot. To trust them. So I, I just, it's good to know that like, I do wish I'm a dude sometimes where it's just like, yo, like you guys just don't have to think so hard about friends. What if you have no expectations for anybody? I have no expectations for anybody. I have to learn that though. You have to learn that though. But do you have the same expectations for like, I feel like we're all talking same sex friends. Like, I okay. expect my guy friends, I don't have the same problems with my guy friends no, than I do with my my women friends. Mm -hmm. It's a lot like, of it's, it's 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 yeah. different. Like if it's I go to my homeboy, my homeboy Domo, love him to death. I'll go to him about anything. He won't get straight to the point and tell me some, like, listen, bro, he don't like you, sis. He don't like you, bro. He doing that, he don't like you. Whereas my friend is like, well, maybe you should try this, Gian. Girl, you're fine. There's nothing wrong with you. And my bro be like, nah, I ain't gonna hold you. You should never said that to him. That's why he moving like this. So I feel like guys are more blunt with me and giving me the truth what I want. Whereas my women friends, they give me a little fluffer. Like trying to stroke my ego, and I don't want that. Men you know friends are important. Like yeah. other sex yeah. um, friends. Opposite sex. Opposite yeah. sex yeah. are. Yeah. I said other sex. Opposite yeah. sex. They're very important and they're needed because you just don't. You can have all your girlfriends, but sometimes they just tell you the other perspective, and that's what's mm. really important about friendship perspective. And you have to like. I'm the kind of person where I have a lot of people in my life where I get advice from. Like, I don't just take my own advice. I have my big sisters that are not even like blood. I have my guy friends. I have my regular girlfriends. And it's all about like, and I just feel like guy friends are just, they're just needed. You just yeah. need that bluntness. You need that sense of, you know, not just so emotional all the time. Yeah, like, I'm not that, that calmness. And I'm not that emotional. Like, I'm very logical. Like, I'm just like, let's just be real. Like, what's going on? You know, and since I'm that guy friend to my girlfriends, so it's just, yeah, like, yeah. hilarious. But, like, I just think it's beneficial for anybody. Definitely. I feel like sometimes, like, in my own experience, I feel like my guy friends have shown up for me at times where my girlfriends did not, you know? And even had them, <laughs> and even had them kind of sitting there like, why am I here? Shouldn't this person be here? And I'm like, you you are right. You're they, right. You are absolutely right. So again, when I'm talking about, you know, friends showing up and my guy friends being able to show up for me in ways that, you know, sometimes my girlfriends could not. And, you know, sometimes that could be in just regular, regular life, work, relationships is a big one too, because sometimes, as you were saying, like that perspective is different. Um, that support you might need in that moment is different. And then it also, it gets dicey though, because what happens when your go-to best friend is the opposite gender and what happens when they get in a relationship now mm -hmm. and now you guys are kind of drifting apart and you don't understand because your friendship is so genuine that you're not understanding how come it's a condition. Our genders are a condition why our friendship can't sustain us being in relationships with other people. I feel like it gets tricky, kind of. I know your situation was different because your best friends were, you know, they were dating each other, so you knew the, the boyfriend and the girlfriend. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, how do you guys feel if you've been like ghosted by a friend because they're not in a relationship and it's the opposite gender? I'm gonna call them out. I've never been ghosted because if my male friends in a relationship with a woman, 
I make sure to show her that you don't not have to worry about me. Because I know this situation with women, they be like, you don't have to worry about them and hate. The girl I make sure she knows I am just that friend. Because I'm going to call my homeboy at 3 o'clock in the morning, but once he gets in a relationship, I understand there's a boundary. I can't do that anymore. Yeah, you can't do that anymore. Let me finish my thought. Okay, no, okay. So, I'm sorry. That sounds like, no. Elijah's like, don't call me. Once he gets in a relationship, I understand I have to respect that boundary. I cannot do that anymore. That doesn't mean the friendship is over. It's just I have to move where he's in a relationship. And I have to put myself in her shoes. How I, Even though me personally, I probably wouldn't care if I know I have to worry about her, but I respect the effort. So I'm just like, I'm not going to cross that boundary. And I end up being cool with the girl, they be calling me like, yo, bro, is getting me tight. Let me tell you. And I'll be like, nah, I'm in the middle of it. Because I made my I made my presence known. Like, girl, you don't have to worry about me. I don't want him. And honestly, you shouldn't even want him either. Because <laughs> I know my like, No shade. <laughs> it's no shade. We, if, you, if you're friends with your guy friend, you know his yeah. flaws. So you see the type of woman he date. Yeah. It's like, I'm even telling him sometimes, like, you deserve better than her. And I'm telling her, he's still growing. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Get, get him grace. The difference between you and I, because I said I've been ghosted or something similar, but you got to know her. That's what it was. You said you gave her the re you gave her no reason to assume that's something else. Whatever. The reason why I didn't do it though is because with my male friends, I, I feel like they're always bringing women in and out, in and out. So to me, no disrespect, and maybe it's because I only have the capacity to handle but so many friends and acquaintances, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people. It's like I don't have the capacity to give every woman that you bring my attention. Now what sucked in this case is that she became someone he looked to propose to and I was like dang it was too late but I found out the reason why he drifted away is because she was jealous and thought we had something going on. Mm. Had I done what you said, <laughs> well, don't get me wrong. it would have been good. If you're a guy who's bringing up a bunch of women, I'm yeah. going to be cordial and be nice. But if I notice that there's a woman that you keep bringing around, I'm like, oh, you must like her. So then I'm going to go the extra mile to make sure she knows I don't want him. That's just my no, bro. And I'm going to make sure she's comfortable. I and then when they break nice. up, I don't want, also when they break up, I don't want that drama on yeah. me. Mm -hmm. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I feel like when the breakup comes and now your friend comes back ready to be your friend it's harder to accept it when it's the opposite gender because it's like well why was why was our friendship our genuine friendship you're like my brother why was our friendship such a big deal in your relationship yeah. what was being miscommunicated to your girlfriend well, well I don't because, know if it's always their part yeah their fault, it, though, you know because it can <laughs> yeah but I feel, yeah it could be insecurity it's, yeah. it's definitely insecurities but I feel like you know, I have a lot of very close guy friends, like some of my best friends, and it's a lot of them. And I feel like there's only been a couple situations where the girl felt some type of way about me because it's very clearly understood and defined. This is my, this is like, some of my guy friends call me their little brother, not even little sister. So it's like, oh, this yeah. is my friend, you know? <laughs> Pulling up ugly, you pull up baddie, like, hold oh, on. <laughs> This ain't no little brother. <laughs> so it's like, I, I get where it comes from, but I feel like if our friendship is clearly explained and defined to your partner, to the, the person that you love for the moment or love for your life, this shouldn't be an issue. Because I feel like on my side, I've never had guys that I was dating, boyfriends feel some type of way about my guy best friends because I've explained it to this is this person, this is how long they've been in my life, This and now they're bros, you know? So yeah. it's like... It's, and you bring them around. Yeah, it, so it's hard for me to accept... A, a guy best friend coming back when your entire time you were in that relationship, I was non-existent. So it now it makes me question your like my place in your life also. I think that was a good takeaway for us, y'all. We got we understand that communication is key Absolutely. to our friend of the opposite sex and to the person we're dating. Now bring them together and make sure we all hang out. <laughs> but it's a good conversation, y'all. Thank you for joining us, me, Marquise. You enjoyed it, Marquise? You I, learned a thing or two? I loved it. Okay. I learned a lot. I, I, a I'm not friend. I'm not gonna have best friends of the opposite sex though. So. Okay, <laughs> well then that's there we go. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's talk about Insecure. For those OG fans like myself, we know we started out as an internet series, and we've really seen Issa Rae just shoot up. But do you all think today we can see Black creators still become famous from YouTube in these, like, internet-based shows? Taylor, what do you think? I think, yeah, I think, well, at that time, it was really big to do web series when Issa first started. So you st you're starting to see now like the old heads getting into, you know, showbiz. But I think for sure, like with podcasts and just even when it comes to like Instagram reels with fashion, you start to see them in like small commercials. I think you can get really big into that space. So my answer is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but would you, do you feel like it's harder now? I think it it's definitely harder. I think it's way harder because everyone's doing it now. Social media wasn't 
what it was like in like 09, 010, where you can be doing it for five years and then you're Jackie Ina, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's, everyone wants to be famous on social media, so it's for sure harder, for sure. Mm, I kind of disagree. I feel like for Issa back then it was much harder because it's hard to get people to kind of watch web series. Now, because we are so into our phones, it's much easier to get people to tune into your content. Now, the hard part is getting, making it profitable, trying to monetize it, and I feel like nowadays, what we have now is not everybody's doing social media, but now we have examples of people who's showing how you can monetize from those opportunities. You know, YouTube has the program where creative thing get paid from YouTube. I get paid on Instagram for my reels. So it's much easier now to get up there, but the hard part is trying to monetize and get money from it. I think that's where the difficulty comes into play. I agree with that as well, because I feel I look at um, 